Okay, putting the head together of your fantasy creature is incredibly important. It's informed by the position of your sketch. But as you bring your elements together, no matter how many elements they are, I have quite a few, you want to treat the edges that overlap so that you can start transitioning. So sometimes when the edge is right, but the color or the lighting isn't right, this is where we can use these direct editing tools like dodge, burn, and sponge. And you'll see them in the side tools of Photopea, right above the type tool. You hold it down to open the drawer. I'm going to start with the burn tool, which looks like a hand kind of cupped, touching its uh, finger and thumb. That's because in a, in a photography dark room, you can bend the enlarger exposure light kind of with your hand that way and burn in certain parts of your exposure. So these are photo editing tools. And I'm going to affect the midtones with an exposure that's always less than 20 using a pressure sensitive brush. And then my brush edge is always going to be 0% hardness. And quite a bit large, like I was doing with the eraser, around 60. And now when I hit that edge, you can see it's still blue. But now when you squint, it's a much darker blue. And it's a tone that kind of matches what's behind it. I can do that down here too. And I can bring that over the top a little bit, just in the midtones. Now, often when you darken midtones, you can see how they start to get really saturated, like really colorful. And when you don't want that, and I don't want the blue, I don't want that color. So then you can go to the sponge tool. The sponge doesn't lighten or darken like the others, but with the same kind of settings, with a flow of less than 20. And a soft edge always and a large brush around 60 pixels. I can either saturate, add intensity to the color wherever I click, or I can, in this case, desaturate, take some of that excess color away. And so when I do that, lo and behold, all those blue tinged hairs get desaturated and start to match better with the rest of my reference. So it's pretty handy. Now, the other tool, I've just darkened and desaturated a lot of this edge. If I want to uh, brighten it up again, I can go to the Dodge tool, which looks like a black lollipop. Same thing, pressure sensitive, exposure of less than 20, large brush around 60 pixels, 0% uh, hardness. And this way I can add some of those highlights back in, just in the midtones. And that's going to help. Okay. Next, what about this bottom edge? How am I going to get that to work? The more I look at those eyes, the less happy I am with them. So, I'm not going to worry about the eyes right now. Instead, I'm going to be blending this bottom edge with the panda ears, right? Right here. So one thing I can do is softly erase with my eraser at 100%, but a soft edge, 0% hardness, large, at least 60 pixels. Actually going to go a little bit larger, maybe like 150 I'm going to start biting away at the bottom edge of that top layer to get rid of that, ah, that hard line. And it makes it look like this hair is overlapping, kind of overtaking that texture a little bit. And as long as I get rid of first the hard edge, this is for blending soft texture into soft texture. You'll see it will work a little differently with scales and harder textures. 
So I'll leave that crisp for now. As long as I start with a soft edge 100% eraser, then I can move to lower opacities, like 50%, and transition it more slowly. Like so. Until they really feel kind of blended. Like what are the hairs that belong to the giraffe and what are the hairs that belong to the panda? Now you'll notice that the panda is a lot more saturated, right, than the giraffe. And instead of trying to fix that with the sponge tool, I can try to fix that or play with that with um, overall image adjustments, direct image adjustments. So I can take the giraffe's horns and I can go back now to image adjustments and hue saturation. And I can just up that saturation a little bit. Maybe even change the hue a little bit. I can play with the color balance. Push it, now that it's a little bit more saturated, a little bit more strongly towards the yellows and the reds. Because color is fun, as long as you don't lose dimension. And then the same thing with the ears. I can start playing with levels. On the panda ears, so image adjustment levels. Midtones, do I want to brighten it? Do I want to darken? I think I want to darken these midtones a little bit. Then maybe even limit the highlights somewhat. And then color balance, there's a lot of red and yellow, so maybe I dial those back a little bit. And in the mid-tones, maybe I put a little bit of it back. And in the shadows, maybe I goose the cyan and the blue. So you can kind of work the, the direct adjustments so they already kind of match each other. So that's already a lot better than what it was before without me having to even adjust that edge or blend them. I'm just getting their colors more in line. Just like making the colors of different layers of your landscape match better with those adjustments. Okay, now, now that I've done that color adjustment, now I can go back here and I can play with dodge and burn a little bit more effectively, especially with the dodge tool now. I can really brighten some of those hairs so that they match the ears. And I can use my burn tool to kind of turn forms around. I can even use burn to affect the highlights if they're just too strong, right? You can see how strong this tool is. And then of course I can use dodge in the midtones to soften those back up. So if anything's kind of blasted out, you can bring it back that way. I can also just use my eraser. Now it's at low opacity. I'll use it a little bit smaller just to soften and fine-tune some of these shapes and selections. Let's see, I think I want to do that at a lower opacity eraser. So I can kind of blend them a little bit. There we go. And again, it becomes hard to see which layer the thing belongs to. That's what we're after.
So I have the ears on both sides. I've got the giraffe top. I've got the, the panda eyebrow here. Then this is a little unclear, this shape here. So now we're going to learn another tool, which is I don't want this ridge here. Instead, I want this to be kind of flattened. So I'm going to use a tool that we're going to use for finishing this off. <clears throat> but here I'll just introduce it. Uh, after saving it, Command S. We just learned Dodge, Burn, and Sponge. Now we're going to learn the Clone Stamp tool. So to use Clone Stamp, I create a brand new layer. This is the way we're going to use Clone Stamp in the course, because otherwise it can be a very destructive tool. So I want, want us to use it in a non-destructive way. I create a brand new layer. I'm going to right-click next to the eyeball on that layer, go down to Color, and mark it red to kind of say danger, danger new layer. And then I'm going to label that layer by double clicking on the name of it in all caps, clone stamp. This is a wonderful tool, as long as you don't accidentally use it to overwrite pixels that you've already, that you already need. So I am on a new blank layer. Nothing's on there, so I know I'm safe. Then I'm going to go to the tool that's above the eraser. It looks like a rubber stamp and click on it. And just like dodge and burn, I'm going to use a pressure sensitive brush, but I'm going to use it at 100% opacity. And just like dodge and burn, I'm going to use it pretty large, like around 60 pixels with a 0% hard edge. Okay. Now, if I start painting with it, like I would with dodge and burn, nothing happens. It says I need to select a clone source first by holding alt or K and clicking on the image. So if I hold down my Alt Option button, it will turn my cursor into crosshairs. Just if we were, like if we were stealing a color. If I click, then it will track that and it will copy it. But it's not doing anything. That's because there's one other setting we need to change. Because we're on a new empty layer, we need to say that the source that it's copying from is not the current layer, it's all layers. Okay. So if I do that and I hold down Option and I click, and then I start painting, it's going to copy from wherever I've clicked. So I can keep moving that selection to copy that texture and move it on past. At 100% opacity, like so. So if I need to transition between these two different tones of giraffe fur, I can use these different areas of the giraffe to kind of fill it in. I'm intentionally doing this at 100% opacity so it completely covers up any pixels below it. At lower opacities, it can work to blend it a little bit. But right now, I'm just trying to get the shape right. So that's getting close. So let me just do a couple more transitions. Oh, that's too bright. Use some of this. All right, now the beautiful thing is that's all on its own layer. That's what I made in the clone stamp layer. It's right there. And it's patching over that thing that I don't want. And I can always, because it's on its own layer, I can play with the opacity of it. But in this case, because it was just kind of spot changing and treating it, I'm going to combine it by holding down shift, selecting both layers, and then doing layer merge layers or command E. Now they're the same layer and now I can erase away from that bottom edge with 100% opacity and a soft eraser. And I've just changed the anatomy of that giraffe. 